What have you got there now? I thought it was upside down. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> so you, because it was upside down, you put it on its side. <laughs> I was so <laughs> confused. I was going to turn it the wrong way up. But that's not the right way up. That's crazy. Why do you hide behind the books? Why are you like... Anyway, we're actually going to do a book review instead of being dickheads. What's that face? <laughs> Your implication that you're going to stop being a dickhead is clearly ridiculous. <laughs> I thought my implication that you were being a dickhead was what you were disagreeing with. No. No. Um, we're going to review Octavia... You have got it up. No, you don't. No, I don't. It's because it reflects the... Oh, we're seeing the mirror image. Because it's a K, our brain is telling us it's upside down. Oh. I figured it out. Yeah. The things that the viewers don't have to deal with. We're going to review Octavia Butler's Kindred. Here's my review. This is fucking good. Read it. It is. Um, what is Octavia Butler Kindred the story of? Um, a lady who's time travels. Yeah, so Dana is a black lady in the 1970s and she has somehow developed the ability to randomly move back in time. She has a temporal connection with one of her ancestors in the 1800s. So the first time she goes back, it's 1815, and she gets sucked back in time any time this little shit gets in trouble. She has to rescue him. So they are related, but the thing that's weird is Dana is black and her ancestor is a white plantation Slave owner oh. who has slaves, yeah. And he marries... He doesn't marry. He There is a relationship between him and a black girl and, and therefore Dana has one sixteenth white in her or whatever it I is. think there's a few more generations back than that, but yes. Um, yeah, so whenever Rufus gets in trouble... She gets sucked back through time. But time doesn't work evenly, so Rufus, like, sees her when he's five or something, and then when he's nine, and then... And there's not a big rest for her between these episodes. Yeah, and it takes a couple of weeks for Dana. Yeah, the... It's um, science fiction. Yeah. Yeah, it's a science fiction. But it's one of those good science fictions that's not so caught up in its premise that it forgets to have a story and characters. In fact, and it's things hardly, you care about. hardly at all caught up in its premise. It's really all about the story, isn't it? It, it really is. The time travel is definitely a device to put characters who wouldn't normally meet in the same room. That's really what it is, um, which is, to me, that is the hallmark of good sci-fi. That is, that is what yeah. it should be. It shouldn't be caught up in you know the specifics of the spaceship and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, the characters in this are um, are exceptional. They're realistic. They're believable. They're complicated. They're flawed. Yeah. Um, now, the the thing I like, the device I like that mm. Butler uses is that she tells you how Dana, how it ends for Dana. Yeah, right at the beginning. So it starts with um, the very start of the book, the prologue. I lost an arm on my last trip home, my left arm, and I lost about a year of my life and much of the comfort and security that I have had not valued until it was gone. When the police released Kevin, he came to the hospital and stayed with me so that I would know that I hadn't lost him too. 
but before he could come to me, I had to convince the police that he had that he did not belong in jail. That took time. The police were shadows who appeared intermittently at my bedside to ask me questions I had to struggle to understand. How did you hurt your arm, they asked. Who hurt you? My attention was captured by the word they used. Hurt, as though I'd scratched my arm. Did they think I, didn't they think I knew it was gone? Accident, I heard myself whisper. It was an accident. They began asking me about Kevin. Their words seemed to blur together at first, and I paid little attention. After a while, though, I replayed them and suddenly realised that these men were trying to blame Kevin for, for hurting my arm. No, I shook my head weakly against the pillow. Not Kevin. Is he here? Can I see him? Uh, so you know what happens. You know you, that she loses her arm. Yeah. And that she doesn't die. And that takes the... Because <laughs> she loses her arm. It takes something out of the book, but it it more makes you focus on other parts of the book more, in, which... Yeah, instead of holding your breath for her safety, you really get to experience her perception of her safety. Yeah. I thought it was very clever it, to do that. It really... It's the little mistreatments as well as the big mistreatments, but you can really sort of empathise with the little things that happen rather than going, oh, well, she better just keep her nose down and not be killed by these slavers, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely think it shifts the focus. It, um, if you were, if you spent the whole book worrying that she was going to die, um, which... I mean, someone who's used to 1970s equality uh, being sent back to... I mean, this was written in the 1970s it, as well. Yeah, so. and I would have used bunny ears about... Today's... Today's equality Yeah, as well. yeah. I... Like, I'm not... I'm not... Anyway. Anyone who went made that time jump, that would be a huge risk that you would fuck it up, like that you would say the wrong thing to the right wrong person that you would stand up for yourself in the wrong situation like it would be so hard to control your i want to say self-righteousness but that sounds like i think that it's unjustified but your justified self-righteousness when someone is asked to you you know yeah um one of the first things that comes up with the the differences in languages and the things that change is that Rufus who um who Dana saves refers to her as an N star 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 star. Yeah. Um and he's a white character and she's like, You can't say that and he's like, But you are one <laughs> <laughs> He's like and she's like, I don't care, you don't call me one. <laughs> yeah. Um and it's just you know him trying to understand that, well, she didn't like that, you know, and he just well, and he, struggles. I don't even think that he struggles. He just doesn't, he doesn't live in a world where he has to care about that, whether mm. she likes it or not. Her likes and dislikes don't come into his computations of his reality. It's very... I, I found this so interesting and so gripping and so really easy to read. Like the writing is, whoops, um, the writing is very good. Yeah, yeah, it's quite accessible. It's I really like books that that are just you can rip through them. You, you could have given this book to a ten year old and they'd be able to read it. Whether you would give it to a ten year old with what it says is another matter. But do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, the language is quite... It shouldn't be a task to understand what the author is saying. You should have to think about the things that the authors try to make you think about, not... Yeah, I mean, I think there's a place for flowery descriptions and blah, 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 but... Yes, yes. But you didn't need it for this story, and and it's it's pared back, but it's... You know, you, you've got enough so that you can... In, vision the surroundings and yeah the 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 historical world is real and the and the modern historical world is real too like the 70s is evoked quite well which i think is interesting for a time that would have been current for the author i felt 
like a sense of not nostalgia because I wasn't alive for the seventies, but like it sent that that retro sort of feel. You know what I mean? Like I I felt that yeah that both times were time periods were sort of created in a way so that you could feel the time period, which is strange because one of those time periods was current for the author. I don't know if she had a lot of foresight and was making it evocative for future generations or just if that was to distinguish between the two. Well, I definitely think she was trying to distinguish between the two. but Yes. Whether she was trying to do both. Um, I want to say this is being classified as a sci-fi, but it's literary fiction. And it could almost be historical fiction. I, I I think it'd be silly not to classify it as historical fiction. There's so much in this that would have been quite well researched. There's definitely links to real rebellions, real um, what did they call it? The underground when they were trying to help slaves escape to the north. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah the the way yeah yeah. So there was half a dozen points of fact that that led to me wanting to Google things and learn more about um, the history of slavery in America um, from from this novel. So she was it's clearly like a well researched historical novel in the historical aspect. Um, so I think it would be remiss not to acknowledge that part of it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Kevin. Um, I thought Kevin was a really interesting character, a really interesting device for Octavia Butler to use. So Kevin is Dana's partner from the 70s. And at one point, Kevin is with Dana when she starts to go backwards in time and goes back in time with Dana. And Kevin is a white man. And Kevin is clearly not a racist white man. He's married to or in a relationship with a black woman and is very, like, she goes to a lot of effort to point out that he was quite good in the 70s. And then what happens to Kevin when he goes back in time to the plantation age and what he has to do to survive? I think that's really complex. And I think the way that she's demonstrated um, Kevin's journey is very clever and but also I think there's that um sort of adage that you can't have an equal relationship between um a black person and a white person and or even a man and a woman because structural power is too prevalent and you can't entirely eradicate that even when you try to um, and I, I definitely think that, that that rings true in this. Um, but also he he works, like he gets stuck in the past without her and he chooses to spend his time helping to free slaves. So while there's the exploration that he's not quite as racially conscious as he should be, yeah, he's still good. He's still he still at his core does not want to see these people hurt. And and there is the acknowledgement that the other stuff is is not a quick fix. It's not something you can change over time. It's it's probably not something that we will see completely eradicated for generations because it's like with the, with the systems being what the systems are, then you're raised in an environment where yeah, I I don't get how people say that we don't have racism in our society when a hundred years ago we definitely had racism and people were alive then. Yeah, like, yeah, and I think uh, as a as a heterosexual woman, I think um, we negotiate the power in our um, in our marriage, knowing that there are power structures out there that put you above me all the time. And you have to acknowledge that in order to make sure that we don't echo those assumptions. Um, in fact, quite often 
we run a business together, if you don't know, and quite often the tasks that we do individually in the business are deliberately picked because we think that there is an advantage because of how society views the genders. Yeah, um, oh. but but additionally, neither of us wants to be trapped by that, and certainly I don't want to be in a position where he's my boss. Yes. Because that's not a thing. Um, but that's definitely the assumption. But you have to be conscious within your relationship of that sort of dynamic, and I think that she demonstrated that in this really well obviously for a racial context rather than just the gender thing. Yeah, and it's it's probably worth noting that, like, we're comparing racism to sexism and they're different because they'll, they'll work differently. But Yeah, and there's definitely different assumptions and different roles and blah, blah, blah. But I think the, like, the, the white male over the black female um, power dynamic is probably, like, exaggerated but relatively similar. Yeah, yeah, I mean... For a long time, that's what we were told is the biggest, the biggest power differential you can have. Now, of course, you can really stretch that a bit further by having trans and cis and all of those sort of stuff in there yeah. now. But yeah. um, that was like what we were told early on. Yeah, I, I think that this exploration of that sort of power dynamic, both in the seventies and in the in the eighteen um, hundreds was one of the more interesting aspects of this for me. I thought that their relationship was so interesting. Yeah. Um, it was so interesting. Yeah. How he really tried to... What he tried to do, actually, is it's such a typical guy thing. He tried to play both sides. He tried to make everybody happy and not pick a side. And he, by doing that, disadvantaged Dana. Um, I definitely think that there was an element of, like, he had to play act the master and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um, she has a, there's a, there's, she even, Dana even examines it. She's like, it, it's difficult not to get lost in the role for herself um, and not to, and to understand that this is this is not my reality, and she was comparing the fact that she had the advantage of knowing that she would have another reality after this, as long as she didn't die. Um, whereas everyone who she was a slave with did not have that escape, um, and she felt real guilt about that, and then there was just sort of the comparison to how Kevin was playing the role and maybe getting a bit into it too much. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Really it was, interesting. There's so much subtlety in her writing there and so much. Yeah, but it's not hard either. Like I found that it was really easy to find everything that she was. Yeah. 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 I think Kevin was my most interesting character in there because really I felt like Rufus was a little bit interesting too I felt like Dana it was real black and white Dana was the victim Ooh. of everything and she was like fighting against it mm. where with Kevin is being advantaged by this system and he doesn't like it, but you know, like, uh, yeah, but I still think he was like ultimately disadvantaged. Like I think if you move from the seventies to the eighteen hundreds, just like the base level of comfort in your life is a disadvantage. Um, yeah. But... Well, the other character I found interesting was Rufus because, because of the time travel, we got to see Rufus at multiple points in his life. And we got to see Rufus go from what looked like a relatively nice kid to being a complete monster. It was really interesting to me. Without um, getting into wet nursing and nannies and all that sort of stuff, they did uh, an exploration of that because Dana was 
he is returning, caregiving, saving his, his little childish but um, friend when he was a kid. And as he grew older, like, he, he was familiar with her. There was, you know, a, it was a relationship. There was, I would even say, love there, much like... I imagine children, white children who were brought up on plantations by, you know, their black servants. And then when he came of age, he was still a bigoted prick selling his slaves um, like they were meat. And, and Dana got treated differently but still ultimately was part of that class and that that sort of cognitive dissonance that that shift from being raised by these people and and being connected to them and, and being nurtured by them to then not treating them as human beings is something i find so hard to understand about the slavery period and and elsewhere this has happened in the world and etc cetera, etc cetera. i i can't how do you dismiss someone who was essentially the role of a mother and and their entire and anyone who looks like them like they're just it's as a human being i, I find that inhuman and the way they used Dana to sort of to replicate that scenario was really interesting in this book. Um, it didn't help satisfy me at all. I, I don't understand. I, I do not understand how that has happened in history. It's one of those things that I don't think I will ever understand. It's just beyond me. It's craziness, isn't it? But it's... It, she did try and explain this by, so Rufus's father was worse than Rufus, it's fair to say. Yeah, I definitely think there was, like, generational improvement. And a lot of the stuff that Rufus does that's bad to begin with, he says, he says, I'm just doing it for my dad, right? Once once I do this, I don't, I've made a promise, I don't have to do anything else. It's just he started this and i just got to see it through sort of thing yeah like i'm already in this system i have to i have to carry on the commitments of this system um it's almost like he's almost implying it's my honor on the line here yeah, like yeah and and the commitments to the system and to his father um are more important than anything really uh it's it was very interesting. I, I definitely think the implication of like generation by generation improvement was letting white people off a little bit easy. Yeah, yeah, and that was definitely one of the that was a story of hope that I do think that without it, this probably would have been really, really, really bleak. All right, you've touched on this. I'm going to take it in a slightly different direction. What did you make of the Oedipal relationship between Rufus and Alice? Because Alice is, she looks like Dana, you know, they're, they're, they're sisters, they're twins so often. And then Rufus, who, you know, views Dana as a sort of a saviour mother figure sort of thing, ends up in a relationship with Alice that may not be... Well, healthy. Well, Let's just say it's not healthy. Um, yeah, I definitely think it was interesting. I... Yeah. You... I just thought it was a man thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did you think of it? I just... I, I thought... I don't know what I thought about. I was trying to ask the questions and not have an opinion. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. It, I definitely thought it was pro Freud's like Oedipus thing. Like he he was admiring her, and he was 
it was weird because he could have at any point, you know, he... I'm trying not to say what happened in the book, but we, we're way beyond spoilers, aren't we? Yeah, I don't think this is a spoiler-free review. Yeah, all right. Well, she, he basically, you know, he, he not basically, he just flat out raped Alice, right? And forced her to become his concubine wife. Well, I don't... Yeah. I don't know what mistress. that is. Mistress, yeah. Um, and he made it damn clear that he can do whatever he wants to Dana. And he could have just done that to Dana too. And yet he chose not to. Well, until he... Uh, yeah. Um, and maybe that was the whole point of the, the Oedipal structure is to create that tension that eventually led to the final, you know, um, because... I mean, I I guess in that situation, it's just a matter of time. I think one of the things that we don't really take into account with all of the older novels is that when they talk about when they talk about like love and marriage and all of that, that we go out and we see so many people and our our cities are huge and we have transport and we have the internet. And, like, our pool of people that we could marry is massive. And their pool of people that they could marry is well, well diminished. And that often they end up... Do you, you know, Raving like, their slaves. No. Uh, I don't understand where you're going with this. I don't mean, like, obviously the rape is wrong. But that... that even if it wasn't rape, even if it was consensual, it would still be kind of gross in that situation, wouldn't it? And and I kind of think that his attraction to her is a little bit... He doesn't have anybody else, but it's also a little bit he's drunk on his own power and he wants to impress that on her. Well, I feel like his initial attraction to Alice even when they were children was that he owned her, he had all the power He she had to do what he said had to play the way he wanted you know she would have had to be subservient to him in all circumstances and I think ultimately rape is just men enforcing their opinion that that is fact. And I think that white men raping slaves is so prevalent in the stories and there's there's a reason for that. It must have happened all the time. I I feel like it would be inevitable. I feel like you would rock up to your master's house and fucking count down. Like if you don't see them as people and and you find them like how are they just not like sex toys? Like how are they not vibrators essentially? Well essentially vibrators that that are for men, like, yeah. Yeah, but also that kick and scream and, and respond in a way that makes you feel powerful. Like... Yeah. As a slave only... Like, it just... Ew. But inevitable. Like, I just feel like that... Yeah, once once you stop seeing them as people, then you can do anything to them. Yes, and the whole society is built up so that you can't see them as people because the economy is structured around them not being people. And I just, I felt like this, the fact that that was the crescendo of this novel was so true and important because I feel like every woman has had that gut instinct when you meet someone creepy where you're like, I'm leaving this situation and never talking to you again because otherwise I feel like 
something is going to go wrong. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be inevitable that you are a uh, disgusting. But can you imagine being owned by that person, like, and never being able to leave? leave? I just, the fact that that was the ending, I was like, of course it is. Of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah. And I, I thought that was really powerful. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to discuss in this? I thought the most interesting character was um, the man who got sold sold down the river. The man who got sold down the river? Yeah. What's his name? If you find it by doing that. I want to say... No. What was his name? The big guy. Isaac. I fucking found it. Really? You found it? Um, Isaac. It basically gets sold because he won't listen to her about consent. He's hitting on her and she's saying, no, back off, leave me alone. And he's just trying to stamp his big willy all over her and go, no, white man, I'm having this one. And she's saying, don't. And he continues to make advances and then it gets noticed by Rufus and he gets sold. Well, I did not feel sorry for him. (laughs) I didn't. I was like, you prick. You made her feel responsible for that. And you're the one who did the wrong thing. Really made me angry. And I think that's... uh, um... That's something that we see quite a lot of time is that if you're intersectional, that black women have it worse than black men. And but black men often treat black women like crap because men often treat women like crap. Um, yeah, and then they're copying it from... Yeah. And, and you kind of... You feel like that the black man should get it because they're they're picked on by the white man. But actually, it's like the father beats the son and then the son grows up and he beats his kids. I think ultimately most men don't see women as human beings. Um, I think it's very difficult for a lot of men to understand a woman having uh, an opinion that is the opposite to theirs and that that is valid and potentially even informed. Um, And I think especially when it comes to her own choices about her body and her consent and her who she does and doesn't get romantically entwined with. Like, his overtures in this were so familiar to me in the sense of, like, all men, the same bullshit when you say no, like... Yeah. He, it, it's apparently the same with they're, they're a slave or... You know what I mean? Like, it's all... I feel like, you know, you've said that Octavia Butler must have done a lot of research, but, you know, she was a black woman, or is a black woman. Is she still alive? I assume she is. I think we will have to look that up. Yeah, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. She was a black woman when she wrote it. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether she's alive or dead now. That she will have experienced being hit on by people, because women get hit on by men all the time, um, and most of it is something that that they don't want. She died in 2006. Oh, poor love. 59, not even that old. Not even very old. Yeah. A pioneer of her genre, Octavia's dystopian novels explore myriad themes of black injustice, women's rights, global warming, and political disparity, and her work is taught in over 200 colleges and universities worldwide. I will be treating Octavia Butler as an insta-buy after this book. I, as as a entertainment book, it was fantastic. As um, social commentary, it was incredible. It really did get both of those boxes with a big tick, didn't it? Yeah. That was that was the thing about this book. And even like the character development was great. It was just it was it's a really good piece of fiction. Um maybe I should reread it. 
<laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Like, yeah. Um, two big recommendations from both of us for this book. Yeah, for sure. This was a good one. Um, so if we haven't spoiled it all, go out and buy it. Uh, what did you think of it? Because I'm assuming by now that you've read it. Um, and, yeah, tell us all the things. Have you read anything else she's written? What should I pick up next? What's the thing you bought? The Sour? The Parable of the Sower. The Sower. Parable of the Sower. That's an interesting name for a book. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to see. How it goes. How it goes. All right. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it was moderately really average, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it... Subscribe because we're awesome and you want to see more of our content. Yeah. Do other things. Bye.